Hey guys, this is TSM Athena IGL for our Valorant team, and I'm here to teach you how to play Killjoy and what little tips and tricks I have. And shout out to Logitech G for making this video possible. When you're playing Killjoy, you're usually playing the Senti Lurker role. Um, as a Lurker, your job on attack side is pretty specific. You're trying to catch off rotators, making sure you're keeping stuff safe on the other side for your team to come back if they need to. Um, but in general, that's pretty much how a Lurker plays. And on defense side, you're more holding down a site, making sure you're getting the kills and denying any entry into your site. Killjoy is really, really good at gathering information for specifically your sites um, or for places that you don't really want people to walk up on. So for example, on defense, on Icebox, if you set up in tons or in tube, if that's what you call it, um, when you set up in tube, it's really, really easy to hold down. And that's kind of a spot that you don't want to dedicate a person to hold because it is one of the smaller rotator spots and it's not a site. So it just kind of works out perfectly. So you don't dedicate a person, but you can dedicate a turret, which is pretty much a person. Um, her kit just utilizes uh, a lot of cool stuff that you can deny entry, get information, um, and do damage from across the map too. So one of Killjoy's weaknesses is definitely her range on her utility. Um, it kind of sucks that you have to stay near where your util is in order for it to stay active. Uh, that kind of messes up with if you're trying to play a little sneaky like, especially if you're lurking, the other team will actually see your alarm bot pop up on the floor when you walk away and it deactivates. So it kind of gives them a good idea of where you are. So the second you ro rotate off your site, you can kind of get caught off guard if they see your alarm bot pop up. Um, and that's kind of like her weakness right now, especially with the nerfs on her turret. One of my favorite agents to play with Killjoy is Astro, which is kind of ironic because I play both of them. <laughs> so Astro and Killjoy together make a really good combination because as soon as you see her turret go off, you can put an Astro Star there and suck or concuss and you can immediately peek and see if there's people there. As soon as you get the kills, it's pretty much like a 4v5, 3v5 and it's perfect for your team. Uh, I think another really good character to play with Killjoy is Sky. So you can essentially do the same thing. If a turret spots something, you use Sky flashes and you can kind of peek off of it. It's a really good enabler for getting picks or getting um, aggressive peeks or just getting overall map control. I think Killjoy's best maps are definitely Icebox, Ascent. I think Split can be really, really good too. I'm kind of in between Killjoy and Viper for Split, but I think Killjoy played the right way with a certain playstyle. She can be really, really sick both on defense and attack. So Killjoy is one of those agents that's really, really good on those smaller and narrow maps because you don't have to walk that far from your utility on those kinds of maps, and you can set up in spots where there's multiple lanes. So for example, I think Icebox is a really, really good map for her. I know Icebox is a little on the bigger side, but holding down tube is so, so good, especially with the new Sage nerf, um, where you don't need Sage to plant on B anymore because the boxes aren't spammable. I think Killjoy is going to be an insane um, kind of meta rotation for that. So when you're Killjoy, for me personally, I prefer buying a Vandal because I can play back and let my turret do all the work. I know when someone's peeking, so I can just shoot them with my Vandal from far away. I don't have to worry about it. Um, definitely when you're on a full buy, buying a Vandal is really, really sick. When you're on an eco though, I think buying a Frenzy and playing close to your turret, as soon as it spots something, you swing and peek with that Frenzy, I think it's pretty much GG at that point. So my Logitech Pro X Super Light actually helps me peek with my turret because sometimes popping mollies and then flicking up to heads is really hard to do. So when you have a Vandal, just one tapping heads, this is definitely the way to do it. Makes it so much easier, makes it easier to flick and control everything, including my utility. Killjoy's nano swarms, I kind of call them mollies, so if I say that, don't get confused. Um, her nano swarms are super, super awesome. They do a lot of damage when they're placed in the right places. So on maps like Ascent, when you use Killjoy's mollies on defense, you can actually hide them in some pretty sick spots so people don't break them when they're entering onto the site on defense. Her nano swarms are super, super sick at holding down a site. You can prevent them from going in. You can hold them back for a few seconds while your team rotates. And on attack, I actually prefer to use my 
spreading out of swarms after we've taken the site, you know, putting it on the bomb, or even while you're executing, coming up with some lineups is pretty, pretty sick. You can throw them like on stairs, on ascent, and you can pop them um, as your team is running in. It kind of prevents anyone from standing in those common spots, those common areas, and they get scared of standing in them for the next round when you execute. So when you use your util and you realize that you're not getting any more damage and you're not getting any more kills, that's when you know you probably should switch around where your util is being used. Also, you probably timed it a little too early or they're actually just baiting out your ut utility at this point, which might mean that you're playing a little bit too readable and it's always better to move your util at that point. So the alarm bot is actually super useful because it goes invisible when you are near it and it is activated. Once the other team gets close, they can shoot it, which is really cool because that's also a really good indicator of good information. So with the alarm bot, you want to put it in places where you don't want to dedicate a person to stand there and watch, or it's a place that you know your teammates aren't going to be holding that often, and it gives you really, really good information on the defense side. On attack, you can put it in places where you know your team might rotate take back to or places where you think the other team might perhaps aggress. I also like using my alarm bots in smokes a lot because when the other team puts a smoke down, I can put it in there and I know they're not in there. That works really, really well against people like Viper because when she puts her orb down, a lot of Vipers like to play in it and get really annoying with it. So as soon as you put your alarm bot in there, she either has to break it or it pops when it's near her. So you know she's not pushed up. It is super important to mix up where you put your alarm bot. Sova darts, um, shock darts, actually, like when they start finding out that you put your alarm bot in the same spot every round, they're gonna be able to break it with lineups. That being said, people will also know where you put your alarm bot and they will use it to kind of bait out the rest of your utility or maybe even a rotate from your team. So the alarm bot, it's really cool because you can use it in different ways. When you put it close to somewhere um, where the other team has to execute into, you can play far back and peek off of it and get free kills. However, if you want to play close with the alarm bot, that's also really, really cool, especially on places like attack, because you can put it close to somewhere where you think the other team's going to push up. And the second they push up and it pops, you can swing with that and you'll be able to do a lot more damage than you normally would have done. Killjoy's turret, it's really, really cool because it pretty much acts like a person that's standing near you and shooting at the side of someone. It's a really, really good alternative to having an actual body on site holding angles that might get you killed. So when you place your turret on places like defense, um, placing it far back and annoying to reach places is really, really good because they don't know where it is. And when they swing into it, they will have to shoot it first before entering into the site. That being said, when you put it close, the turret actually does make a sound, so people will be able to hear it the closer they get to your site. And when that happens, it kind of throws them off too, because if they hear, for example, your turret in logs, they're going to be like, okay, there's a turret in logs, so when we execute, someone's going to have to shoot it. And it kind of pulls a little bit away from the execute, and you could get some really good timings if you just peek with the turret or peek while you know the people are going to be breaking your turret. So on attack side, it's really, really good to put your turret in more aggressive spots too, because you can get the map control or the information in B main, for example, without actually having to dedicate your body or any other util. Stuff like Sova util is super important to keep, especially mid round. So it's a really, really good alternative to doing that. Placing it aggressively in places like B main on ascent, you'll know no one's peeking. That being said, you can also place it in different parts of the map, like in mid or somewhere where you know the opera is gonna peak, and that way you'll kind of deter the opera from peaking for you, or she'll have to take a shot and fall off and you immediately get that info. With Killjoy's ult on both sides is really, really effective. Um, you can use it to basically empty out an entire site, knowing very well that the other team can't really sit there unless they have a way to use utility to prevent the lockdown going off. So when you use the ability, you can kind of set up for the execute. It's kind of perfect. If you know Sova doesn't have his alt or lineups or Raze doesn't have her needs or any of those utilities that can break your lockdown, you can kind of put it down and immediately call for your team to get ready for the execute. That being said, on defense, her ult is perfect for retaking. So if the other team is taking sight and you're playing a little more passive as Killjoy and you have your ult, you can use it to retake the site really, really easily. Either the other team has to come and fight you guys to try to break the ult and try to stay on site, or they all fall off and you have a much easier time taking the site.
On defense side, when you use your ability to retake, it's kind of the same thing. You'll kind of figure out where the other team is playing and what post plant spots they're playing in because they'll either try to shoot it, try to leave, or make some noise trying to run to cover. So it's really, really good to get the information during that 10 seconds of the lockdown, or it's really good to just set up and come up with a game plan right away for what you guys want to do. Using her lockdown can definitely be situational. Um, if you use it early, it's kind of cool. It's really good at emptying the sites. However, that means that the other team does have more utility to counter it and more utility to counter your team executing. So if it were up to me, I would definitely use my lockdown a little later into the round. Mid round to late round would be perfect because they don't have all the utility that they had at the start of the round and they haven't really set up or they're sitting in spots which are harder to rotate out of. For me, when I watch people play Killjoy and see that they put their setup in the same spot every round, that kind of drives me crazy because you know that people are just gonna break in. They know exactly where all your utility is and it kind of negates everything that your utility is doing. So I think definitely switching up your spots is, is really, really good and it's kind of my pet peeve. So don't do that if I see you doing that. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> As Killjoy, being bomb carrier can be kind of good and kind of bad. So if you are trying to get to that more lurky play style, having the bomb is really bad because you're obviously going to be alone on the other side of the map of where your team is. However, if you are just executing with your team, having the bomb Killjoy as it actually isn't that bad because you can just plant the bomb and set up your utility right on top of it right away and fall back into a more passive spot that you know you can peek off of your turret or pop your uh, nano swarms first and then peek off. So it works out really well either way. I think Killjoy is a lot about play style, changing up how you play every single round and actually adapting to what the other team does. You can play Killjoy and put your alarm bots in certain places every single round and think you're getting away with it. But at the end of the day, as long as you're kind of being the most annoying you can be, that's when you know you're being really, really effective as Killjoy. Playing Killjoy pretty much means free kills when you use your utility in a smart way. So again, guys, this was TSM Athena with the Killjoy guide. Of course, this wouldn't be possible without Logitech G. So thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And if you guys want more guides, like, comment, and subscribe to make sure you see all the latest stuff we have for you. Thank you so much for Logitech G for sponsoring this kill go Oh my God, kill going God. Right, <laughs> it's hard to say, oh, man. Kill um, and then do you ever want to be the bond carrier for Killjoy? No. <laughs> <laughs>